What's up, Wargamers? Welcome back to World of Wargaming. I'm Isaiah. Today, we're going to be beginning the process of digging into this game, Forbidden Song, which uses the Mork Borg RPG thing system. If you're familiar with it, I'm not. So, anyways, today we're going to make a warband for this game. So, we've got our book, we've got some handy dandy character sheets, and somewhere. Back behind me, we've got dice. So let's get uh, top down, where we can take a look at the book and the pages and all the stuff while we do the things. All right, so in the Forbidden Psalm, your party consists of five things. And it tells you to pick five models and then roll for their names and their stats. I'm going to roll for their names and then pick models. So we got two really big D100 charts. One for a name, one for a title. I'm gonna use both. So my red dice is gonna be my tens place. My black dice is gonna be my one. So on this first one, we got a 60, just a 60. Yeah. So that would be Susie. And then on the title, 74, the Toothsayer. Love it. Now that we have names, let's take a look at our models. So we've got Susie, the Toothsayer. We've got El Bobo, the Patron, or maybe the Patron. We've got Os Okel, Oselt, the Neophyte. We've got Thazic, the Unbuttered. Let me make sure that says Unbuttered. Yep, Unbuttered, not Unbattered, Unbuttered. No butter on his roll. And we've got the distressed cold. So that's going to be our five members now for stats. There are four stats in the game. Agility, Presence, Strength, and Toughness. And there are two potential stat lines that you can choose. You can choose plus three, plus one, zero, minus three, and apply them accordingly. Or plus two, plus two, minus one, minus two and then apply them accordingly. Okay, stats are assigned. Susie ends up with zero agility, plus three presence, minus three strength, and plus one toughness. Your hit points are determined by, based off your toughness modifier, uh, are affected by it, and spell casting is affected by your presence, which is why, like, obviously I want the Toothsayer to be a, to be a wizard. So then we've got El Bobo, the Patron, who's plus two strength, plus two toughness, minus one presence, minus one agility. Oselt, the Neophyte, who's plus three agility, plus one presence, minus three strength, no mod to the toughness. Fazit, who's plus three strength, plus one toughness, minus three agility. And the Distressed Cold, who is plus two strength, plus two toughness, minus one agility because he's cold, and minus two presence, also because he is distressed. All right, so your HP again is eight plus your toughness. So for Susie, for example, her HP would be nine. Next, everybody gets a flaw and everybody gets a feat. So you get a good thing and you get a bad thing. I need a D20. Susie gets a three, which is brittle bones, which makes sense. She's a wizard. She should be kind of brittle. So plus one to damage when she gets hit. For her flaw, a two, or her feet, a two, which is slippery when wet, which is she can always leave, just break away from combat. That's fitting. That's fitting. For the rest of the flaws, we got weak hands on El Bobo, which means he can only use uh, one-handed weapons, and he can't he can't use a shield or a torch and hold a weapon, which makes sense. He's a noble, so he has weak, uncalloused hands. Um, our neophyte is super stinky, so everybody within three inches of her has a minus one to their presence tests. Uh, Thazic is one-eyed. So he's minus one to ranged or spell attempts. And the distressed cold was cursed. So he ended up with uh, scared of heights. He cannot climb or jump as well as brittle bones, which is the plus one to hit when swinging. Now on my feats side of things, for the noble we got revolving appearance. So he is minus one to be hit by enemies. We got intimidating presence on the neophyte, I guess because of her massive funk, which says that a single enemy model that I can see within six must make a presence test, and if it's failed, 
then I could lose that model as if it was mine or drop one of its weapons. Fazit got Medic, so he can pick up a downed teammate uh, that's in return to 1 HP to get it back in the fight or off the board. And our friend, the Distressed Cold, received Claws. So instead of their basic fists, he gets Claws, which are a D6 agility-based attack. Then we go to our equipments. Now, each model has five equipment slots plus their strength, um, whatever that modifier happens to be. And you start with 50 gold, I wanna say. All right, we got equipment sorted out. My wizard costs five for being a wizard. Um, wizard has, she has a staff and a rapier with light armor. El Bobo has a sword and light armor. The neophyte just has a rapier. Thazic has a Warhammer, medium armor, and a helm. The Distressed Cold has a helm, light armor, and a Warhammer, which brings us into scrolls. So your wizard gets one clean and one unclean scroll. These are the spells that they know, and all spells have a range of 12 inches. So for my, I need a D10 for this. For my clean scroll, I get a four, which is second win. Target creature gains one D6 extra HP until the end of the scenario and reduce the caster's HP by two each time it's cast. Does not work on downed models or casters. For the heathen magic side of things, I get a 10, which is doom. All models and creatures within 12 inches, including allies and the caster, must make a presence test. On a failure, take D10 damage, ignoring armor. Any failure to cast this scroll is a fumble. Jeez Louise. And the last thing to calculate are our movements. So your movement is five plus your agility, whatever your, that modifier is, plus or minus. So Susie can move five, El Bobo can move three, the Neophyte can move eight, Thazic can move two, and the Distressed Cold can move four. And with that, my friends, we are ready to get our two by two board set up with some terrain and start digging into our search for the forbidden saw. Thanks so much for tuning in. I hope this video was helpful for you. Hope if you had any questions, I was able to go through the process slowly and thoroughly enough to explain them. It's not a difficult creation process. It's pretty, pretty straightforward, but I always like to do these little quick videos before I get dug into a game. Thanks for stopping by. I hope you have an absolutely amazing rest of your day. And as always, I'd like to say a big, huge, from the bottom of my heart, thank you to our patrons who support us and pledge to us over on Patreon. You guys are the absolute best. If you enjoyed the content you saw here today and that's something that you would like to consider doing to help out the channel go over there check out the link in the description check out the patreon there's a lot of cool stuff over there including access to our discord server talk to me hang out with me talk about our work what we got going on in the hobby um some shout outs all kinds of cool stuff check it out if that's something that you think you would be into and regardless of whether or not you do that i want you to know that i am incredibly grateful that you decided to stop by and spend part of your day with me today, rolling dice and pushing toy soldiers around. I hope you have an amazing rest of your day. And as always, may the dice be ever in your favor.